I, we maintain they are a massive and a growing threat. This book, Silence, is about 500 pages. Our, our first version was three times as long. And the publisher said, uh, no, we would like a much shorter version, so this is a shorter version. Uh, what we did in this book, we also survey what happens in, in the Western world, and there's a, there's a long chapter on the United Nations, developments there. But today I just want to focus on the, the first half of the book, which includes a survey of some 20 Muslim-majority countries, including major ones, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Egypt, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh, and so forth. And what I will do is summarize our findings from that survey. Also, let me emphasize that um, I work on religious freedom issues. I work on in a human rights context. And this is a human rights survey. That is, what are the contemporary events? What are the contemporary restrictions? What are the contemporary problems uh, which exist? Um, it is not a theological or religious analysis. I am not qualified. Uh, to do that, certainly in a, a Muslim context. Um, we do, incidentally, um, in the book, because the, the authors, uh, we, we are not Muslims, uh, we are not skilled in arguing within the context of Islam, but we thought this was an important issue to, to take up. Uh, what does Islam teach about such things? So we invited um, three Muslim scholars, to contribute essays addressing this question and defending religious freedom. Uh, one of these was the late Abdullah Ram Bahid, um, and his essay became the, the for, is the foreword to the book called God Needs No Defense. And there are also essays by the, the late uh, scholar Hafiz Abu Zaid from um, Egypt and Abdullah Said from uh, the Maldives, um, arguing that Islam does not or should not um, have such restrictions. They are they're contrary to Islam and they are destructive. Okay, what are some of our findings from the, the survey of uh, largely Muslim countries but also worldwide? First finding is that something new is, is happening. There have always been restrictions in a Muslim context and a Christian context and other contexts, uh, restrictions on, on, on what is said, religiously particularly if it's, it appears to be an insult. But one new thing is that now you get international events. Those did not happen before. Uh, the, the quotation here uh, is actually from the historian Bernard Lewis, who says, at no time until very recently did any Muslim authority ever suggest that Sharia law should be enforced on non-Muslims in non-Muslim countries? Uh, but a big change occurred approximately just over 20 years ago, 1989, when the late uh, Ayatollah Khomeini in uh, Iran declared that the novel by the Indian-born British writer Salman Rushdie uh, was blasphemous and it was the duty of every Muslim to kill him. Um, this was a new phenomenon, demanding the person in, in a country overseas um, be, be killed for um, his writings. And Rushdie at that point did not claim to be a Muslim. Um, Rushdie is still alive, though with great restrictions on his freedom. He's had bodyguards and so on. Um, more recently, he could not travel to India for fears of uh, his safety. Um, but many other people connected with the book were much less fortunate. And there are, are books de detailing what happened. But some examples. The, the novel's Japanese translator was assassinated. Its Italian translator was stabbed. Its Norwegian publisher was shot. 35 guests at a Turkish hotel hosting its Turkish publisher were burned to death in an arson attack. And there are many other examples. So you had a sort of worldwide wave of violence uh, in response to the book or the condemnation of the book. Uh, that's new. Since then, there have been um, similar uh, outbursts or eruptions with, for example, uh, Theo Van Gogh and Hersi Ayan Hersi Ali's uh, film Submission or 
what we usually call the Danish cartoons or the Swedish cartoons, uh, or Pope Benedict the 16th uh, speech in Regensburg, uh, the Dutch politician Geert Wilders, uh, film Fitna, and so on. And you get um, so eruptions and comment and political involvement around the world in relation to that. Um, yeah, one, just one other case which drew international attention was, as I think you will know, was reported widely here um, that a, a very obscure Christian pastor in, in Florida, in the United States, uh, Terry Jones, announced that he would burn a Quran on September 11th, 2010. Um, nobody in America knew about this. Um, this was, the news was first published in Saudi Arabia and then picked up in the Muslim world, and then Americans found out about it from the Muslim world press, and then, of course, then Americans started covering it, and this became a huge issue. The, the head of the US, uh, the NATO forces in Afghanistan, General Petraeus, then asked that it not be burned. Then the Secretary of State, the Sec US Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, and the President of the United States all became involved in this issue. Um, and Pastor Jones has a congregation of less than 50 people and was not well known. So uh, this incident again becomes an international thing involving even 